Hi, my name is Ariel and welcome to Mermaid Musings. Quick disclaimer, I just got this new background and as I was setting up to record this video, I discovered that it is too pale for my skin tone. Meaning there's two camera settings for me where it's constantly trying to adjust on my face and the camera becomes blurry and focused and blurry and focused over and over and over again. Or I'm a little bit grainy along with the background. You're getting the grainy version of the video because I thought that would be less annoying and I'm just gonna do something with this. I don't know, but it's not going to be used in my videos in the future. I apologize for the video quality of this video because that is not normally the case and we will have a completely different background by the time I film and record my next video. Anyways, let's get started for the month of October's astrology forecast. As always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip to wherever you want to go in the month. Great news, at the beginning of the month, we no longer have Mercury retrograde. We also have Pluto and Saturn leaving their retrogrades this month as well. The bad news is at the end of the month, Mars goes retrograde. The middle of the month is going to be the best time for forward momentum. Personally, I'm going to try to get as much stuff done as possible before our Mars retrograde hits because it's a little bit of a doozy, which I'll explain more about that transit once I get to that point in the video. This month is extremely related relationship focus because we have many aspects involving Libra placements. Some are positive, which will aid you in forming deeper bonds, while others are challenging aspects that might stir up some drama. You just have to roll with the waves of whatever is happening to you and keep other people in mind with your decision making. Remember to breathe deeply and think clearly before taking any action. Try to always keep in mind what is fair before speaking or making decisions. Because even if you think it only affects you, the world doesn't work like that and will probably impact the people around you more than you can recognize in the present moment. Speaking of fairness, this month is all about evening your life out, about finding balance where you have none or at least poor balance. Yes, this applies to your relationships, but it also extends into other areas of your life. If you're working too much and not allowing yourself time to rest, you have to figure out how to carve out that time for yourself. Or if you want to be career driven, but your personal life is super chaotic and that doesn't give you time to go after what you want, you have to figure out how to calm your everyday life down. Figure out where you're lacking balance in your life and adjust your skills. All right, we're starting out the month with difficulty in relationships. If you already feel unlucky in love, boy, have I got the transit for you. It can feel like nothing is going right or everything's just a little bit off when it comes to your relationships, even if you can't put your finger on why. You're facing this juxtaposition where you want to do what's best for the other person while simultaneously doing what's best for you. But these two perspectives don't coincide. You have to reconcile in your mind that there's no win-win situation. There is only compromise. You can find ways where both of you are represented, but honestly, no one's going to get a hundred percent their way. And that's honestly what's most fair. So that's what you have to do, even if it's not a fun choice. You have to keep other people in mind while keeping yourself in mind as well. That way you can figure out what's ultimately best for everyone. You can try to get everyone as close as possible to getting what they want. Finally, we are out of Mercury retrograde. Mercury still has to cover all the ground it went over before it went retrograde. So don't expect a sudden shift where you're now in forward momentum. We also have a bunch of other planets retrograde, which you have to keep in mind. This is your opportunity to finish up what you were unable to finish during Mercury retrograde. Let's say there was a long-term project, which you came back to during Mercury retrograde, which you basically finished. But there are still some fine details that that need to be taken care of. Your top priority should be doing those now. Everything else is secondary. This is about coming full circle, about bringing projects to completion. If I was you, I still wouldn't start on new projects until after Mercury's out of its post-shadow period. Even if you think you took care of everything over Mercury retrograde, I would go over all that work and give it a second look. See if there's anything tiny that you missed, and even if there was nothing, which I highly doubt because with Virgo, there is always room for improvement, you can at least go forward having peace of mind that you left nothing behind. This is a great day for deep 
thinking. If you've got a paper due or anything that requires intense mental concentration, I would do it on this day. You're gonna be able to bring more nuance and interesting points to what you're working on than normal. Plus with Mercury and Virgo, you're gonna be able to add in those tiny details that are easy to miss, but ultimately elevates your work to another level. This really isn't that significant. I'm only adding it because we have one less planet retrograde when we have a ton right now. This is helping to add a little bit of more forward momentum to your life before Mars goes retrograde. You want to work on taking care of what you need to take care of before Mars goes retrograde on the 30th and your life becomes even more chaotic than it already is now. This full moon in Aries is about getting in touch with what you emotionally desire and what the people you love emotionally desire. So you can see where those desires coincide. That way you both ultimately get what you want. Once again, there's an opposition to Venus in Libra from an Aries placement. Meaning emotions feel like a complicated mess where you don't know the right thing to do. Here's the thing about life. You rarely know the right thing to do. All you can do is try your best. Try to be fair to the people you love while not leaving yourself behind in the process. If there's something you emotionally need, you have to express that, otherwise it's gonna eat you alive. Emotional connections require compromise, but not so much so that you lose yourself in the process. This is about finding that balance. We also have a sextile to Saturn and Aquarius, which is about control and once again, fairness. Aquarius, like Libra, wants to do what's best for everyone. Meaning if you're not keeping other people in mind, if you're not taking other people's emotions into consideration, you're going to have to learn some type of lesson. Likewise, if you're putting other people's emotions above your own feelings, there's going to be some type of consequence as well. Lastly, we have a sextile to Mars and Gemini. It's likely you're going to be unable to stop yourself from verbally expressing your feelings. The good news is because this is a sextile, laying all your emotions out on the table can turn out to be a positive development. It could be something you've been needing to get off your chest for a while, and once you do, you feel like a weight has been lifted. On the other hand, you have to be careful that these words are not spilling out out of anger. Because Mars is anger and aggression, after all. What you say needs to come from your heart, not the pain you're using as a mask to cover up what you're truly feeling. We are finally back to Mercury in Libra, though it's still in its post-retrograde shadow period. This is when we're finally starting to feel like we are completing whatever it is that we've been needing to work on so that we can finally move on. This is a great time for Mercury to pick up steam too because Libra is a cardinal sign, meaning it loves new beginnings. You're finally at this place where you're able to start on new projects with excitement and vigor. Now that you've finished everything that was weighing you down, you can begin again in a lighthearted, more refreshed way. Whatever fuels your passion, even if it's scary, even if it's something you've never done before, start on that thing. You need to question how your ego gets in your own way. But do this in a manner where you are kind to yourself. Don't beat yourself up for your mistakes. Don't tell yourself that because you made a mistake, you are undeserving of everything that you want out of life. At the same time, don't ignore your mistakes. Don't pretend that you didn't make them or make excuses for them. Own up to your mistakes so you can learn from them and move on. That's what Saturn wants out of you. Anything else and instead of teaching you in a gentle way with a trine, it's gonna wait till a harsher Saturn aspect to the sun to teach you that lesson. We all have lessons when it comes to our ego, whether our ego is too inflated or disinflated. Is disinflated a real word? I mean, I don't I don't really care. You get my point. Like everything involving Libra, it's all about balance. It's important that we have an ego, but that we have an ego that works to ours and others benefit, not to everyone's detriment. 
Welcome to chaos. We have two transits that are causing disruption in our lives. The most important thing to remember is to not go overboard with what you say. With that opposition between Mercury in Libra and Jupiter in Aries, it's easy to start talking, meaning to be diplomatic, but then you keep going where you divulge way too much information, where you didn't mean to share all that and it just leaves you feeling embarrassed later or causing some kind of accidental drama. With Mars and Gemini squared, Neptune in Pisces, you also might not be making a lot of sense. Or the information that you're presenting, it might turn out that it's not true or parts of it aren't true. Or you might approach what you say in an aggressive manner and you might not be self-aware enough to know how you're currently being perceived. Maybe you didn't mean for what you say to come across aggressively, but it does. You have to be extremely self-aware during this time. Use discretion in what you say or keep your mouth shut. You don't wanna rock the boat any more than you have to this month. Where does how you choose to act in your relationships get in your own way? Where do you make mistakes that you don't want to confront? How can you be more fair to others and to yourself? Those are the questions you want to be asking right now. Wherever you've been lacking balance in your relationships, you want to try to even out the scales. Try is the key word because with Saturn, you're not going to fully succeed. However, you can make forward progress. You can improve this area of your life. Make conscious decisions when it comes to yourself and others. Pay attention to where the scales are uneven, accept it, and then fix it. I decided to combine these two transits together because they're such similar energies and they're basically happening right on top of each other, meaning it's gonna feel more like one energy. This is a great time for having excitement and enthusiasm. This is get up and go energy. Don't spend your time being lethargic, laying around in bed all day. It's time to experience life. With this trine to the sun in Libra, you're meant to experience life with other people. Being active with other people is what's ultimately going to make your heart come alive. It's what's gonna make you feel good about yourself and your place in the world. The 17th and the 18th are some of the best days of the month to be social, which I checked the calendar on my phone and October 17th is a Monday, but still. The weekend leading up to this transit or that Monday, Tuesday, if you can swing it, is the time to make plans. Most people are gonna be excited about the prospect of socializing, so be sure to take full advantage of that. With Venus trying Mars, you also have this drive to fully connect with other people. To verbally share where you can get to know one another better. Talk about your passions and what gets you excited in life with other people. Likewise, listen to their passions and what makes them excited. Get excited along with them. People love when they share their passions and that love is reciprocated instead of being judged. Society today is too focused on judgment instead of loving one another exactly as they are. Finally, we're about to have the same type of set of transits again, where the sun squares Pluto one day and then Venus squares Pluto the next. We're in a pattern kick towards the middle of the month. However, these aspects, instead of complementing our relationships, are creating friction. Watch out for desperately wanting to be in control of your own life as well as the lives of other people. This intense desire for control stems from insecurity involving the ego. So instead of taking a good hard look at your own ego, you try to control others. When you're putting the spotlight on other people, you don't have to look at yourself. You can easily judge other people's decisions without having to look at your own decisions. You wanna control other people's lives, but have you looked at your own life? Is your life really so much better than theirs? Who are you to judge? Be careful vocally expressing your opinions on other people's decision-making. Because guess what? They are striving for control as well during this transit. People are not gonna take kindly to you telling them what to do. And even if they don't say anything in the moment, they're gonna store away your words in the back of their head, which you might face consequences for later on.
We have two transits on this day. Once again, both of them Libra focused. We're also bouncing back from the rough Libra transits we just experienced to positive Libra transits again. This week might feel like you're ricocheting on how you feel towards your relationships. Right before the Sun and Venus leave Libra, we have the Sun conjunct Venus. What's going to give you a self-confidence boost, what's going to make you feel good about yourself is the way in which you treat other people. Try to do acts of kindness during this time make the world a better place through the tiny actions that you take. You never know what ripple effect they might have out in the world. We also have Mercury in Libra trying Saturn in Aquarius. There's definitely a concentration on details during this period. Use that concentration to uplift others. Pick your words carefully, not because you're saying anything wrong, but so that you can choose the best words to uplift the people that you care about. If you're giving a compliment, make sure you're complimenting something that truly impressed you. That way what you're saying aren't empty words Words and people genuinely believe what you say, which makes them feel even better about themselves. We have two big planetary shifts on this day. Technically, we have three because Saturn is also going direct, which is adding more into us having forward momentum before Mars goes retrograde. But this video is already gonna be way too long, which I didn't wanna drag it on even further. So I'm only gonna talk about the Sun and Venus moving into the sign of Scorpio. They're still both keeping tightly together in the sky. We're losing more of that Libra lighthearted energy and substituting it for more Scorpio weighted energy. Now, in general, that isn't a bad thing. It's good to have weight and depth in your life. It's good to get in touch with your deepest, darkest feelings. Without it, you can't encompass the whole spectrum of human emotions. If you're constantly living from a more lighthearted, doesn't take life too seriously place, that's gonna numb you where you aren't able to fully feel joy either. That's something people don't talk about with Scorpio enough. Scorpio's need to explore feelings isn't only the deep, dark, depressing feelings. They can also feel a deep sense of joy as well. It's because they submerge themselves in those depths they can appreciate the beauty of the ocean once they come back up to the surface. You're going to be feeling your emotions to their fullest extent during this time and know that that's okay. Actually, it's better than okay. It's a gift. Use this time to reconnect yourself, to ground yourself in your own soul. The Sun, Moon, and Venus are all conjunct in Scorpio in the second degree. All in all, I would say this is actually a rather romantic solar eclipse. It's darkly romantic, more like when you read an old romantic book that's a tragedy, but it makes you feel deeply while you read it. When it comes to your romantic life, this eclipse is going to push you in the direction that it wants you to go. You can't avoid the lessons it's trying to teach you by becoming light and flying above it all because it will grab you out of the sky and pull you into the underworld. Meaning you might as well embrace the darkness, wade further into it. The further you go, the more it's going to answer the questions that you seek. So don't be afraid, embrace what's coming next. Embrace all your deep, dark, feelings. That's one of the main lessons of this eclipse. It wants you to get back to the core of who you emotionally really are, and it doesn't care what it has to do in order to get you there. It doesn't care how badly it needs to scare you. It's going to try and make you feel the most you can possibly feel. Oftentimes, to get down to the core of your emotions, it's uncomfortable. Because on the way there, you have to embrace emotions that aren't necessarily pleasant, but if you don't feel them, then you can't keep going. This eclipse, is forcing you to expand your emotional range. It's like when you're diving deep down in the water. Every time you dive down, you hold your breath a little longer and a little longer in order to expand your lung capacity. That's what this eclipse is doing with your emotions. It's forcing you to expand your emotional capacity. It knows that you're capable of more, you're just afraid. But you have to be able to move past the fear in order to reach the truth of who you really are. Mercury is taking the same journey the Sun and Venus did during the middle of the month. 
where it is trying Mars and Gemini one day and square Pluto and Capricorn the next. Again, we are getting these repeating patterns this month. Now, your brain is aligning positively with how you take forward action. You come up with an idea and immediately want to execute that idea. You have this energy propelling you forward to take what's in your brain and make it a reality. One of the best ways to accomplish this is through teamwork. When you're coming up with your plans, ask other people for their opinion and really listen to them. People can tell whether their opinions are valued or not, which even if you don't act on everyone's ideas, if they can tell that their opinion was taken into consideration and was taken seriously, they feel like they're building a relationship with you and are more likely to want to work with you again in the future. While Mercury trying Mars is generally positive, you do want to be cautious of how it's engaging with Mercury square Pluto. This can make for some combative energy. People can have a mild criticism or a mild adjustment where they really didn't mean anything negative behind it, but you take it as an attack. Same thing with how other people interact towards you. So you want to try to give encouraging statements to avoid that type of reaction. If you have a different take on a subject than someone else, don't go overboard to defend your position. It's okay for you to have two completely separate opinions without anyone having to get worked up or angry. Not every disagreement is a challenge, you know what I'm saying? This is a pretty short transit, so you want to take full advantage of it. Because it only lasts until December 20th, and this is the last time we have Jupiter in Pisces for another 12 years. So don't let this opportunity pass you by. Jupiter, in a way, is calming us down again. It's moved from fiery Aries into watery Pisces. Our luck is now dependent on our emotional sensitivity and empathy. Luckily, we just went through the Scorpio eclipse, meaning we already had this jolt to work on getting us into our feelings. Now, Pisces is going to help you to expand upon that even further. Work on embracing the Pisces side of your personality. It's okay to be vulnerable and put your armor down. You don't have to be ready for a fight all the time. For the rest of the year, we're going to have some pretty tricky transits. Look at Jupiter in Pisces and the eclipses as what keeps you emotionally connected. They are what keeps you from detaching from your emotions as a coping mechanism. While detachment might feel good in the present at moment, it's never going to help you in the long run. If you want to do a deeper dive, look at what house Pisces occupies in your natal chart, because that's where you're going to have the ability to expand your emotions and luck during this time. I made a video explaining how Jupiter and Pisces was going to affect you personally a long time ago, which I'll link down below in case you want to go watch it. This is our final nudge pushing us out of Libra energy and leading us into Scorpio energy. I've already compiled my list of transits that I'm going to talk about in next month's astrology forecast, and it's very similar to this month where most of the transits are Scorpio based, meaning we're ending this month with the general flavor of what next month is going to feel like. Mercury in Scorpio wants you to think deeply. Don't take anything lightly, no matter how trivial it might seem. Question everything. Try to peel back layer after layer of whatever intellectually draws your interest. This could be a time of great learning. You can leave this transit with a more complex understanding on topics that you didn't have before. Use this time to improve your mental capabilities. This is also a great time to learn about the darker aspects of life. Things like true crime podcasts, watching documentaries about depressing subject matter, reading a book or watching a movie that has a dark messed up message is what's going to pique your intellectual interest. Follow those topics that intrigue you, even if it's not something that you're normally interested in, because it will help your mind to grow. Happy Halloween and Mars retrograde. Yeah, Halloween this year should be interesting. Definitely expecting some intoxicated people to get into some arguments. Don't be one of those people. We have a long period of Mars retrograde in Gemini for the rest of this year going into next year. If you haven't already, you have got to get comfortable working with Mars and Gemini if you want to be productive at all. Ideally, what you want to do is start on whatever you want to work on for the rest of the year during the middle of this month. Then spend the retrograde period completing your work, checking your work, double checking your work and putting the finishing touches on your work. Once Mars goes direct and it's out of its shadow phase next year, that's when it's like all systems go. Use this time to prepare yourself to launch 
whatever it is that you want to launch and put out into the world. Gemini is super scattered energy. What you might want to do is instead of focusing super intensely on one project, start on a multitude of projects. Purposefully scatter your time and energy around. Do whatever costs you at the time, whatever you find the most interesting. That way you won't get bored. So when we go retrograde, you have multiple projects to finish. You're not stuck doing one thing. You get to work on and put the finishing touches on a bunch of different projects. You get to finish a project and be like, that's exciting. What am I gonna finish next? The main rule you need to understand about Gemini in general is that Gemini can never be bored. And because of this retrograde, you're gonna be in Gemini energy for a long Long time. So you have to be prepared to keep yourself from being bored for an extended period of time, meaning you have to have a lot going on. If you don't have multiple projects to work on, then you're going to get bored and you're not going to be able to get anything done because you're going to find yourself distracted by something more exciting, which you're going to follow that new project because it doesn't bore you in the present moment instead of going after your actual goals. If you want to make forward progress, purposefully scatter your attention and energy around. Being consciously aware that you're doing this prevents you from becoming a jumbled up mess and keeps you on track towards your ambitions. That's it. Thank you so much for watching this video in spite of the weird video quality. I make these forecasts every month along with a lot of other cool astrology content. So if you want to see when those videos pop up, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell icon. I also have my social media all linked down below. Lastly, I offer needle chart readings through my Etsy shop, so you can purchase one from me if you feel so inclined. Once again, thank you for watching this video and I hope you have a wonderful month of October.